folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. Uh, man, it's been a busy week. Uh, some of the videos that you're seeing right now were shot a week ago when I put some supers on and uh, I've managed to get through all of my hives. And uh, man, this year, my hives are stronger than I've ever seen them before coming out of winter, going into spring. Uh, most of them I didn't even need to rotate. They had a heavy brood in the top and the bottom. Uh, I've got a couple of red queens out there. I think that means they're three years old, so I need to keep my eye on those, uh, make sure they're uh, superseding and doing okay, because uh, I don't proactively requeen my hives. So uh, I think I got in here uh, before most of the swarm cells developed. Uh, last year I was way behind and I had many hives with swarm cells. So I found a lot of drone brood. I cleaned that off. I found two hives with swarm cells and I also found a hive that the queen has failed or is failing and she's laying spotty drone pattern and that's hive number 11 right here. And I'm gonna check it first one of the frames in there had two swarm cells on the bottom of it, uh, the, the frame that had the spotty drone pattern. So uh, it looks like they tried to requeen themselves. So we'll see. Uh, so one of those cells had been opened and the other was not open. So I wanna see if that other cell has opened or not and uh, see if I could find a queen in there. Uh, those may have been left from last fall, but I don't think so, but we'll check that out. And uh, also the two hives that uh, have swarm cells, uh, we might do a split this evening. So I don't have a lot of time. It's uh, after work, it's about probably 5.30 or so. So I have to move pretty fast, but uh, I don't know if that'll be too much for one video or not. So uh, let's get in here and at least we'll see the uh, laying, uh, the drone layer. And that means a queen laying drones. That does not mean a drone laying eggs when someone says a drone layer. Someone left that comment one time. It says the only male that has eggs is a seahorse. I was like, dude, that's not what I said. <laughs> anyway, that's what a drone layer is. A queen that lays unfertilized eggs and they all turn into drones. So that's what we got going in Hive 11. Let's get in there and check it out and uh, we'll see if we got time to uh, make some splits with those other uh, hives that have the swarm cells in them. So let's get it going. Okay, here's Hive 11. So one thing you notice about it, uh, it's been reduced and not a lot of activity on the front. Uh, it still has an entrance reducer on it too. Uh, compared to these hives next to it. It's a lot more activity going on right now. So it rained pretty much all day yesterday and most of the night. And uh, it's cool out. And this is the first sunshine uh, we've had all day here. Okay, here we are, Hive 11. Let's get in here and see what we find. Wearing my full suit today in case I get in these other uh, hives that had the swarm cells uh, because it's been rainy for a while and it's been cloudy most of the day and cold. So the bees are not gonna be happy. I won't need it for this hive here though. So we still got our sugar feeder on here. See a few bees up here. Set this aside. So you can see we got basically all the bees we have are, are right here, this little concentration. And these bees are old because not a lot of new bees in there. Okay, let's go on and get in here and see what we find. Honey, they're not starving. They don't need that sugar. Uh, that's empty. There's a little pollen there, but that's probably left from uh, before. Let's 
So there we've got bees are bringing in nectar. What bees that are in here. So there's liquid stores from the flow that has started. Favorite time of the year if you're a beekeeper and a bee. So this is the frame I believe we're interested in. Yeah. Okay. Let me show you what we've got here. All right. So all these cells here, I'll turn it kind of, see how they stick out, they're elongated. Those are all drones. So that queen was laying in here and she doesn't have any fertilized eggs remaining. So all these larvae are turning into to drones. And here are the two queen cells I was telling you about. You see the one on the left that's open and the one on the right, uh, it's a little lighter on the bottom now, like a queen is in there chewing. But I messed with it a little bit to see if maybe it had already been opened and I don't think it has been. So it's been a week and a half, so I think that should have been opened by now. I hate to mess with it because that may be the only viable queen this has left. Uh, so I didn't see a queen on this frame. I'm going to go ahead and, and spend a little bit of time looking for the queen and see if I find a virgin queen in here. And we do have drones flying around. So there are you know, a queen could get mated if, if one went out today to mate. I am really curious about this queen cell. It looks like it's just about to open. No, it's not. I think it's a dud. So this queen cell here has definitely had a queen come out of it. You can see by the way it's it's chewed around the edge and it's it's uniform. There's no hole in the side. So a queen did come out of there at one time. The question is when. So uh, virgin queens are kind of hard to spot because they don't have their nice big long abdomen yet. So what you look for is the big, uh, bigger shiny part on their back. And I don't see her there. I'm gonna set this over here. So what are we gonna do with this hive if they don't make a queen? Uh, it's, it's gonna go laying worker where the worker bees will start laying eggs before long. Uh, there's still some open brood in here that's not capped yet. So what we can do with it is we can combine it. And I've got two weak hives. Hive number uh, 17, actually I got three, 17, 18, and number five. Number five is tiny swarm. Number five would probably be the best candidate because that's a uh, one year old queen. She should be in her prime. And I believe 17 is the same. Oh, here's a couple of queen cells on here that I didn't see. So since I've got, whoa, two more to play with, I want to open one of these. This one here looks like it's about to open on its own. And see if there's like a old dried up queen in here or if it's a, a good viable cell. I don't see anything in it. Oh, I do see something. Okay. Okay, so I've torn up that cell there. So what's inside there is a dried up uh, queen bee. So these aren't from this spring. These are from last fall probably. So that tells me there's not gonna be a queen bee in here at all. So we need to take action now. So we got us a bunch of nice comb here. 
and a bunch of old bees. So there's a supersedure cell where they may have tried to make a queen there too. Just in case we're looking real quick for a virgin queen or a queen. If we find a marked queen, we'll take her out. Okay, we're done here. So this hive needs uh, to be combined. So we'll get use of these few bees here. We'll protect this comb and we'll get a, uh, another hive set up stronger. Let's see, get all this back where it was. Okay, I'm gonna get some newspaper and do a combine with uh, number five over there, Tiny Swarm. That's the plan, let's go. Okay, here's a uh, hive number five, Tiny Swarm. You can see it's got uh, good activity coming and going on the entrance there. This top box on here is just there to uh, enclose the feeder. There's a jar feeder in there, an entrance feeder. So this little hive is, I believe it's at least three hives uh, put together, or two hives and one other swarm. And this is just how we got this queen through winter. This queen is from uh, a little swarm that I captured. And it was a late swarm. So most of the time you don't have success with late swarms. So this is emptied out. Get these bees to go down. And we'll get this sugar out of here. There's the last of a pollen patty. Okay, real quick, you can see uh, most of the bees are concentrated around the center, but there's a fairly good concentration of them. So they're a little light for a 10 frame deep, but uh, it's warmer now. Don't have to worry about uh, them being too cold. I just did an inspection on this last week. I saw the queen, everything was good. So I'm not gonna disturb them anymore there. I know from this other hive that I'm fixing to put on here, there's a frame of honey. And uh, there was a frame of honey in here from before as well. So my point is I think this hive has everything they need. And uh, we'll give them a deep frame that's full of comb and has a few bees in it. So we'll uh, put a few slits in here. And we don't need this anymore, so we can go store it. Okay, so we took care of hive number 11. Huck, it's about to gas me. Got it over here on top of hive number five. We could have put some frames of brood in hive 11 and worked through all that process. It would take a while for them to get built back up. So that's one thing that I've changed my thought process uh, over the years, and I've been beekeeping since 2013. So when I had four and five hives, and I had a hive that was in this condition like this, number 11, I would do my best to uh, 
help that hive survive. So now that I've got 30 hives about, I just cut my loss, move it to where it can, can recover the fastest and worry about spot number 11 at another time. We're going into swarm season. I'm gonna have bees coming out my ears here before long and I'm gonna need places to put them. So they will build up faster if I just put a new beehive with a swarm cell there or a split or whatever and let them build up from new than to try and mess with this. So this way, this tiny swarm here gets access to this new comb and a few new bees and that queen is a one year old queen so she ought to be laying like crazy and filling this thing up. We might actually get a little honey off of this thing in the fall so we'll see. Uh, so that's the end of the video. I'm not going to go into those others uh, in this one. That'll be too long. So uh, give me a thumbs up if you would. And don't forget to subscribe on your way out. And y'all stay safe and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.